Hi everybody, welcome to day one, section 9-1, multiplying and dividing rational expressions. So today we are going to simplify rational expressions and simplify complex fractions. Okay, so the rule of thumb that we need to follow for today is going to be the following. Actually, let's just zoom in here a little bit. All right, so rule of thumb, you cannot cancel terms. Okay, so no canceling terms, but you can only cancel factors. Okay, so we'll talk about the difference between a term versus a factor. Okay, so you can only cancel factors, you cannot cancel terms. Okay, so if we uh, take a look at these first few examples here to kind of get us started. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm looking at this x minus 3 over x minus 3. x is a term, 3 is a term, x minus 3 is a factor. Okay, so terms are held together with pluses and minuses, addition and subtraction. Okay, factors are all of those terms together. Okay, so I first look and say, okay, x minus 3. If I want to simplify x minus 3 over x minus 3, I cannot just cancel the x's and cancel the 3's, all right? I first go through and I see if I can factor my numerator, okay? x minus 3 is as factored as it's going to get, so I like to use parentheses around it. And same with the denominator, x minus 3 is as factored as it's going to get. So I go through my factors in my numerator. I have an x minus 3 in my numerator, I have an x minus 3 in my denominator, so those cancel and we are left with 1, okay? If we zoom over to example B really quickly, okay? Again, x is a term, 3 is a term. x minus 3 is the factor. x is the term, 3 is the term. x plus 3 is the factor. So I've got an x minus 3 over an x plus 3. In order for these to cancel, they need to be identical. I have an x minus 3 in my numerator. I have an x plus 3 in my denominator. I don't have the same factor, so my final answer is what we started with. x minus 3 over x plus 3. The x's don't cancel. The 3's don't cancel. Okay? Let's take a look at example C really quickly. We've got an x minus 3 and a 3 minus x. These look kind of similar, but if we notice, they're in different orders, okay? So does this simplify? Well, what if we rewrite the denominator, okay? So I'm going to keep my x minus 3 the same, and I'm going to put parentheses around it to remind me x minus 3 is the factor. If I factor out a negative 1, in the denominator. That would leave us with negative 3 plus x. Okay? And let's just rewrite that denominator a little bit. So we have x minus 3 in our numerator divided by negative 1 times, if I just change that order, it becomes x minus 3. Well, now if we notice, we've got an x minus 3 in our numerator, it can cancel with the x minus 3 in our denominator. So those can cancel, and what are we left with? We're just left with 1 over a negative 1, and another way we can write that is just negative 1. Okay, so that kind of leads us to our side note just below here. This is a key concept to keep in mind. All right, if I have a quantity, a minus b over b minus a. They look very similar, okay? 
A minus B, B minus A. They're just in reverse order. Well, this is always going to simplify as negative 1. Okay, so you have to kind of keep that in mind. It comes in handy when we're going on to the next step. All right? Okay. So now let's go through and talk about simplifying these next expressions. Okay? So there's a few goals in mind that we have to set, and we've kind of already touched base on these two. The first goal that we need to take care of is going to be factoring completely. That means numerator and denominator. So factor everything completely. So we'll have to uh, brush up on our factoring skills this chapter. Okay, after we factor completely, then we're going to go ahead and cancel any factors okay that the numerator and denominator share so what's this going to look like well let's go ahead and get into some examples, okay? So if we're looking at example two here, x squared minus 4x minus 12 over x squared minus 4, okay? I notice that x squared minus 4x minus 12 can factor, and that's going to factor as x minus 6 times x plus 2, okay? x squared minus 4 factors, that's a difference of two squares, so we've got x plus 2 and x minus 2. Now I go through any factors in my numerator, and I see if I have those same exact factors in my denominator. So x minus 6, do we have an x minus 6 in our denominator? No, we don't. So I move on, x plus 2, do we have an x plus 2 in our denominator? Yes, we do. We cancel those, and then we just clean up our final answer of x minus 6 over x minus 2, and there we have it. Okay, the x's do not cancel, and the 6 over 2 does not simplify. Those are terms, not factors. Okay, all right, let's try example 3. So example three is a little different because now we are multiplying two ratios. So we still have to go through the process of factoring completely. So our first numerator, 4x squared minus 4x, hopefully you recognize we've got a GCF there of 4x, leaving us with x minus 1. Our denominator, x squared plus 2x minus 3, factors as x plus 3 times x minus 1. And now we're going to go on to the next ratio, x squared plus x minus 6, factors as x plus 3 times x minus 2. And then that 4x, that's as good as it's going to get. Okay? So now we're just going to go through and cancel any common factors. Okay? So we have a 4 in our numerator, We've got a 4 in our denominator, so those guys go away. I've got an x in the numerator. We've got a solo x in the denominator with no addition or subtraction with it, so those cancel. We've got an x minus 1 in our numerator. Do we have one in our denominator? Yes, we do, so those factors cancel. Next factor, x plus 3. Do we have an x plus 3 in our denominator? Yes, we do, so those factors cancel. I move on to the last factor in my numerator, x minus 2. There is no x minus 2 to cancel it with. So now I just gather any factors remaining in my numerator and in my denominator. And the only thing we've got left is that x minus 2. So there's our final answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next page. 
Okay, so now we are going to simplify each expression and we're going to focus on dividing. So just like what we did yesterday, we are going to, instead of divide by a fraction, we're going to turn it into multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, that's going to make our lives a lot easier. And then it just follows like what we did on the front page. Okay, so if we look at this example four, we notice we are dividing by a fraction. So my first step would be to change it to multiply by the reciprocal. So we've got 5x over 3x minus 12 times x squared minus 6x plus 8 over x squared minus 2x, okay? So I want you to actually take it from here. Now it follows just like an example from the front page. So go ahead, factor and cancel, and I'll give you a little bit of time to do that. Okay, so what you should have gotten was 5 over 3. If you did everything correctly and you canceled out those uh, particular factors. If you have questions on this, make sure you ask us in class tomorrow. Okay, let's move on to example five. I'm actually going to help get you started with example five and then uh, I'll let you finish it. Okay, so this is a longer version of what we've been dealing with, but nothing to be afraid of. So one thing I do notice is there is a, multi or a division symbol. So anything that follows our division symbol, that's what we change and take the reciprocal of. So my first step is we've got this x over x plus 5 times, now this is like saying 5 minus 3x over, over 1, okay? So I'm going to rewrite it as that, 5 minus 3x all over 1. And now we're going to change this to multiplying by the reciprocal. So x plus 5 now becomes our numerator. And 9x squared minus 25 becomes our denominator. Okay, I want you to continue factoring completely and canceling any factors out. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind is that note that we talked about on the front page. Okay, so go ahead, give it a try. Okay, if you did it correctly, you should have gotten that answer of negative x over the quantity 3x plus 5. Again, you had to remember that note from up front, so if you didn't get that, go take a look at that note um, and then try this again. Okay? All right, the last thing we are going to look at is simplifying complex fractions. So a complex fraction is simply a fraction within a fraction, okay? So if we kind of look at it in a sense where we have a plus b over 4 divided by a squared plus b squared over 8. And actually, I want to make one change. I want to change this to be an a squared minus b squared. Okay, so make that change right now. All right, so another way we can look at that is here's one fraction, a plus b over 4, divided by another fraction. So if I rewrite it in the way that I said it, it's going to make things a little easier. So a plus b over 4 divided by a squared, don't forget to change that to a minus, b squared over 8. And now it's just like examples from up above. We're dividing. So instead of dividing, we multiply by the reciprocal. Okay? So a plus b, and I'm going to go ahead and factor at the same time. Okay? A plus b does not factor. So a plus b, I'm going to put it in parentheses, over Four. I'm changing it to multiplying by the reciprocal. So 8 becomes the numerator, and a squared minus b squared becomes the denominator. Factoring that right away is a difference of two squares, a plus b over a minus b. And now we can go through and simplify 
as much as possible. So we've got an A plus B factor in our numerator. Do we have one in the denominator? Yes, we do, so those cancel. My next factor is this 8. Is there anything that 8 can simplify with in the denominator? Well, we've got a solo 4 down in our denominator. Well, 8 over 4 simplifies as 2 over 1. Okay, and now we just clean everything up. So we have a 2 remaining in our numerator over a 1 and an a minus b. So we can just leave it as a minus b. And there's our final answer. Okay? So complex fractions, just rewrite it initially, and then it looks like a division problem. So we just multiply by the denominator. Okay? All right, last one here. I want you to try B on your own, okay? There's more factoring to be done, and then uh, do any cancellations that you can. So go ahead and try it and see what you get. Okay, so here's what you should have gotten. You also needed to keep in mind that side note that we made on the front page where we have A minus B over B minus A, and that simplifies to negative 1. So if you have any questions on this or you didn't quite get the answer that I got, make sure you ask your teacher tomorrow in class. Other than that, we are done with our notes for the day. Have a great night. Bye.